When you're lying on the ground with your eyeballs about four inches above the dirt, a baby possum ambling your way looks like a voracious carnivore. Watching a 500-pound bear approach from this angle will paralyze you. I wanted to warn the others, but I was as rigid as an eye beam, unable to speak. Snapping branches had woken me to the sight of a lone bear illuminated by the full moon over the Sierra Nevada. He passed within inches of my face, his stench so rank it almost pried me from my rigor mortis. I stared at his little stump of a tail as he lumbered away from me and over toward my four sleeping friends. He headed straight for Woody, sprawled out on top of the picnic table, and effortlessly flipped the table sideways. Woody went soaring. He landed with a thud and let out a yell that ended abruptly when he caught sight of the perpetrator. The bear slobbered and grunted about for a bit and then went for our heavy-duty, 50-pound cast-iron cooler. With one flick of his paw, that cooler was thirty feet down the dark road. One more swipe, and the cooler was in the nearby creek. In no time, the bear had ripped it open and was chowing down on about $350 worth of freshly purchased groceries. By now, everyone was wide awake, and we scrambled into our van and pursued the beast down to the creek. When we got his rump square in our headlights, we began honking and screaming and gesturing like lunatics, trying to scare him off. He looked back at us, then wheeled around and reared up, facing off the van, all eight feet of him, his immense paws and claws spread wide. Our jaws hit the floorboard. He let out a deep roar that darkened our shorts. This bear could have peeled off the top of the van and snacked on us like sardines. We timidly extinguished our headlights, quietly reversed the van, and backed meekly into our campsite. Still watching the bear, we turned off the ignition, and no one moved. That's where all five of us stayed the rest of the night, trying in vain to sleep while listening to the sounds of our dinner guest enjoying his buffet. At dawn, we ventured down to the creek to survey the damage, expecting to see the cooler in pieces. But it was remarkably still intact, just slightly dented on one side. Likewise, the lid, flung about fifteen feet downstream, was still usable, though it brandished a couple of deep scratch marks across the top. Perhaps Yogi had some experience in opening heavy-duty coolers. Bits of plastic and containers were scattered about, but every shred of food was gone. As we broke camp later that morning, we were annoyed by all the leaves and twigs sticking to our boots and pants, and then we uncovered the reason for our nighttime visitor. Mel admitted to pouring honey all over the ground and beneath the picnic table in a juvenile attempt to attract a bear to our sight. The four of us gaped at him, not sure how to exact recompense for such a boneheaded move. But we all concurred. Something had to be done. We considered tying Mel to a tree for a night and pouring honey all over him. Seemed a little extreme. Was voted down three to two. We were largely in favor of having him replenish the groceries our bear friend just polished off. But considering our dire financial straits, including Mel's, this approach probably wouldn't have yielded much.